Alright, so today I'm working on this 1986 Nissan 200SX Coupe. I did a SR20 swap in it a few months back and it's back for a uh, rack and pinion because the rack started leaking really badly. Uh, you don't really see these cars anymore, which is pretty sad. Um, they're really cool. I've had two of them in the past with uh, multiple different swaps. Uh, they're really fun. I prefer the hatches, but you know, coupes are cool too. But let's get to it. So first step obviously is to jack up the car, put on jack stands, make sure it's safe. Uh, next you're going to want to take out the cotter pin and loosen the tie rods. Um, so let's do that now. Okay, so the cotter pin's out, the nut is loose. Uh, now you have to separate the tie rod from the, um, the knuckle. There's a few ways of doing this. Uh, I have a pickle fork. I don't want to damage the boots on these, so I'm just going to try to smack the, the knuckle with a hammer a bit and see if it comes up. Uh, Comes loose. So. All right, got my hammer. Let's see what happens. So. There we go. It's loose. Sorry for the noise. That's all there is to it for the tie rods, at least. So now we do the other side and uh, start loosening the the lines and rack. So. Okay, so now we go under the car and. First, we gotta do is disconnect the lines, let the fluid drain out. Um, and then you have one bolt here, one bolt over here, and on the passenger side, you have one bolt there, and then another bolt uh, on the other side as well. So, once that comes out, um, you also have the steering shaft bolt, which is hard to see. Uh, actually way up way up here okay and then that's about it it should be ready to come out okay so for the upper line it's a 17 millimeter line wrench you can use a normal 17 but line wrench is safer um, so you don't strip it but I'm gonna break this loose and let it drain and come back to you okay got the upper line loose um, the bottom line is actually a uh, custom um, for the SR swap stuff, so it's an 11 16th uh, standard size, but it fits on there. So just gonna do the same, break the line loose, and then uh, let whatever else drain out of that, and start loosening all the bolts, and try to see if I can take it out without lifting the engine or anything. So we'll see. Okay, so I got the lines off now. Now it's time to start removing all the bolts. Um, this one's not too bad. These two are not that bad either. Uh, the worst one is most likely going to be the other side of this one because it's kind of uh, cramped. But I think a shallow socket should get it no problem. There are 14 mils. Um, don't know if you're going to have the same problem with the stock motor or not. But mm, this is again swapped with an SR20, so uh, this is what we got to do. Okay, I got all the bolts loose, um, everything's out, the rack is loose, um, I even got the, the steering shaft bolt loose, um, so that's out, just required extension with the socket, 12 mil socket, um, so far so good, now we gotta try to see how far to come out without either lowering the subframe or jacking the engine up. Alright, so unfortunately there's not enough room to uh, get the rack out, it's hitting the engine all over the place. Um, I decided that I'm going to end up dropping the subframe. I've actually done this before in this car because the uh, upper oil pan gasket was leaking, or seal was leaking. So in order to do that on the SR, you have to drop everything pretty much, so um, it's not my first time doing this on this car. Uh, the way I do is I unbolt the LCAs from the uh, cross member and both the tension rods and then lower it, uh, the subframe down. I have a, a engine holder thing, tool, whatever, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, I'll be putting on the top, loosen the motor mounts and the engine will be hanging while I drop this and it'll give me enough room to take the rack out. And the bolts and the nuts are 22 mils. I have uh, angled wrenches to fit in there better get a good bite on it because you don't want to strip those. Um, 
not really a common bolt size, I guess. Um, and it's S12 stuff, so S12 stuff is not easy to come by anymore, unfortunately. But yeah, uh, get back to you when I make some more progress. All right, I got the LCAs fully disconnected. With the sway bar, the tension rods, and uh, yeah. So the last thing is um, the motor mounts. And put the engine holder on top, and it's ready to come down. Loosen the cross member bolts, and that's it. Okay, we got the engine mounts disconnected. Um, these suck to do on S12s. I actually might modify these um, when I take the uh, cross member off. It'd make it easier for a wrench to access, but we'll see. Um, I got my engine uh, holder thing installed. It's actually holding the engine right now, so I'm gonna go under, loosen all the cross member bolts, and drop it out. All right, so the cross member is off. The engine is just hanging in there now. Um, gonna clean up the cross member, do some cleaning uh, in general, and then uh, start putting the new one in. Here's the old one. Um, the seal is busted inside the rack, so that's what the major issue is. Um, the customer bought a remanufactured one a long time ago, actually. I think these are discontinued. I don't think you can buy them anymore. So uh, hopefully this one's good. All right, here's the new rack with the tie rods swapped over. Um, it comes with new inners already, but the outers are still good from the original one. So I'm just gonna reuse those. Uh, yeah, it's gotta center it and then put it back in. All right, I got the rack back up in there, the cross member. Um, it takes for a long time to center, but a good way to know if it's centered is if you count the amount of turns from one direction to the other, it should be equal. So in this case, it's one in one in about a half to the right, and then one in about a half to the left. So that rack should be centered, hopefully. <laughs> 